Okay, so Duncan, Sean, can you hear me okay? Yes. We are going to start this week, as we have done for the last couple of weeks, with a really dumb question. And this week, hopefully, my audio won't completely fuck up and we don't lose the entire thing, because Sean had a whole thing on vegan sausages. So, (laughs) my, my question, I've got this app, it's Would You Rather, and it comes up with a dumb question, and I'm going to ask both of you guys... Would you rather shave all of your body hair or all of the hair off your head and live like that for a year? So literally, like, no hair on your body or no hair on your head. What would you rather? No hair on my body? You'd rather go for no hair on the body. Have you seen the hair on my head? It's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I want to get rid of that. (laughs) Sean, what about yourself? Yeah, I'd, I'd go no hair on the body. Sure, yeah, just no, no one to see it, would they? Just become a wrestler for a year. And if I got rid of the hair on my ass, it'd probably save me a lot of like trouble when I've had a bit when I've had a bad poop. So that's that's very true. The benefits outweigh the negatives. Yeah. Uh, well, the only reason that I bring this up is because you are currently speaking to a shaven from the neck down Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your life-changing news? This is my life-changing news, right? <laughs> so, so I was in the shower the other day, and I was giving the old uh, Mons pubis a quick shave, right? And I, I went a bit too far, and I shaved like a bit out of my thigh, and I was like, oh shit, I need to even it out. And I evened it out to my knees. I evened it out to my knees, and then I looked at myself, and I was in the shower, like looking like I had just two hairy socks on and I was just thinking to myself I've just got to do it so I shaved my entire leg down to my toes <laughs> however I got out of the shower and it just looked like I was wearing a hairy cardigan so I got I got back in the shower and I shaved from the neck down I am completely hairless apart from two places my armpits and my anus. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good because there's been no acquisitions, so you don't have to exactly. worry about that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, it just killed me today when I was on the Would You Rather app, and the first thing that it came up with was that question. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, I'm living one of them. So I'd love to know the thought process about carrying on, rather than being a bit like, no one's going to see my inner thigh. <laughs> I was doing a lot. Yeah, it annoyed me. Like you know, there's that animated episode of Mr. Bean where he goes to get a haircut and it's just like going up and up and up. So I just, I just took a bit too much off, and I was like, oh, I'll just even it, and then I couldn't, and it was like, oh shit, I've got to like get them even. But yeah, I basically just shaved my entire thigh down to my knees and just carried on. Now, the life-changing part is, mate, I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, when it starts I have been back stroking legs. my legs for like <laughs> three days nonstop. It's so good. I moisturise them. I even gave them a quick second shave when I had a shower today. My tattoos on my legs are popping. Mate, fully shaven. I feel like, you know, the episode of Always Sunny, the quarantine one, where Frank wants to be pure. <laughs> I just want I to feel be pure. Like I feel like that from the neck down. <laughs> it's life changing. <laughs> Honestly, it's it's amazing. So oh, I cannot recommend it enough. If anybody listening to this hasn't tried it before, I heartily recommend shaving yourself from the neck down. <laughs> Main key areas, nipples, that hurt. That really hurt. I had to really get around those. Uh, the knees. Wait, how hairy were you? Slice them to pieces. I've got a hairy chest. I'm not going to lie. Well, I my, looks... yeah, but my nipples aren't especially hairy. I was going to say they look. Like, it like stops before the actual <laughs> yeah. nipple. Yeah, I don't know if my actual <laughs> nipple is hairy. You don't, need, you don't have a bushy areola, do you? <laughs> it's not Harry and the fucking Hendersons. <laughs> <I'm just> gonna... <laughs> was I the one that actually like lifted their top up then to look no, to I was double doing check? It. <laughs> Basically, I had afros on my nipples, right? That was what it looked like. It looked like two little Maltesers stuck to my chest, all right? No, but, mate, I'm loving it. I feel like a seal, just slick. 
I feel like if you put me in a bathtub, I'd just slide everywhere. <laughs> lying on the sofa and <laughs> to go into the kitchen, you just slip off the sofa. Honestly, I feel like a sexy slug. Just <laughs> slick and cool. It's amazing. And I'm actually rubbing my legs as we speak. It's that amazing. Oh, oh my Congratulations, God. Um, but, I guess. Mate, I sliced my legs to pieces. Uh, like, completely annihilated. It was like... Um, Edward Scissorhands had a go at me the first time. But, mate, clean-shaven legs, boy. I'm telling you. Way of the future. So, yeah, that's my life-changing news. Sean, do you want to do some housekeeping? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get the housekeeping. Now that the, the image of a pure Harry is seared into our minds. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, um, I feel like a Barbie doll. Like, completely smooth. I don't know why I didn't say Ken. I feel like a Ken doll. Completely smooth. Uh, too late. You said it. <laughs> Oh, I look like a microphone, just completely smooth and fuzzy on the top. That's what I look like right now. What does what does Shannon think of it? Uh, not not great. <laughs> I mean, I spent like an hour and a half in the shower, and she was like, "What the fuck yeah, are you doing in the so. shower, you moron?" Uh, but now nah, she's to mind. I mean, it was a bit of a shock to her when I came out looking like I just had three rounds of chemo. But yeah, doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to cut that out. And with that, <laughs> am I cutting that, guys? Yeah, uh, uh, said well. <laughs> <laughs> you did talk about battering babies last week or something, didn't we? Uh, clubbing babies. We've done Michael yeah. Jackson's School for the Mute. I'm pretty sure we we solved the uh, murder case of thingy. What was he called? Barrymore was it? Michael Barrymore. Michael yep. Barrymore's pool party. <laughs> We've done a lot. We've done a lot. Yep. I might edit this out. Sean, do the housekeeping. <laughs> Welcome to episode 37 of the Gamers Watch podcast. Uh, housekeeping this time, let's share it with your local barber. I know it says Spartan on the script, but after that story, we have to go <laughs> local barber. Um, leave us a review slash comment on your platform of choice. And then you can also follow us on Twitter, which is at Gamers Watch Crew. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, which is youtube.com slash gamers watch. You can also like this video while you're at it. And then don't forget to hit that reminder button so you know when we go live, which is every Friday at the main show starts at 8 p.m. But the pre-show starts at quarter to eight if you want to listen to some funky music for 15 minutes. And this time we will make it so it's not copyright struck. And and then two hours before it's going to go live... We're like, oh shit, we've got to edit the fucking thing. And, and yeah, it was a whole it was a whole thing. Two weeks mm. in a row, copyright struck. First week was Sean's fault with the Star Wars music. Second week was my fault with Disney's the on hold music. Yeah. Uh, so shall we move on to a little bit of Xbox news brought to you by the Midweek Mix Up podcast, guys? I believe we should. Because we've got a few games that are coming out this week. Um, when I say this week, I mean the week that we are in, if you're listening to this on the Friday. So we've got Lost Words Beyond the Page. Sable, which I'm very excited about, Subnautica Below Zero, and Lemnis Gate, which I've been looking into, and oh boy, does that game look great. Do either of you know what Lemnis Gate is? I can't really no. work out what it's supposed to be. Is it like a turn-based first-person shooter? Or It's a turn-based first-person shooter where each round you get 25 seconds to do like an action, and it's a time loop mechanic. So then the second round goes... And you then tactically, you see where the first round went. And then in the second round, you can see where they everyone went in the first round. It, it's it's a tactical shooter that uses a time loop mechanic. Uh, yeah, that sounds really interesting. It looks great. It looks a bit like Splitgate, where it's got mm. that portal dynamic to a standard first-person shooter... Lemnis Gate has this time loop mechanic, and I think it'll be really good. And I don't even like multiplayer first person shooters, but this does really, really look good. Um, yeah, we do good. have we do have something big to talk about. Um, does anybody want to talk about Microsoft acquisitions? Oh, fucking no. No, Sean. No. Nope. Cool. So Call of Duty Vanguard is a steaming, <laughs> putrid, rancid pile of donkey shit. <laughs> Should we talk about that for a second? Oh. If we have to. So, Duncan, 
remind me, when you watched Saving Private Ryan as a young whippersnapper, do you remember that scene where uh, Tom Hanks' character picks up an M1 Garand and it's got an eight-time microscopic zoom with stickers on the side and a blue dot sign? Oh, it's, it's pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah. That's what we were saying the other day, like, when we were talking about 1917, we were like, oh, my favourite bit was when he called when he called in a supply drop. Tactical nuke. <laughs> then, yeah. <laughs> when just, someone got a 25 kill streak and called in a tactical nuke. <laughs> it's, I mean, like, like we've kind of all, all whinged about already, it's, it's going to sell anyway, because that's yeah. the only thing lots of people will play. It's, it's just a reskin. Just fuck Call of Duty, man. Just fuck it. In the yeah, ass. It, it is exactly the same, and they've just slapped on some World War Two shit onto it. And broken is it World bits. War Two? Oh my god! Yeah, it's broken to it's, fuck. <laughs> Sean, say. please, please talk about how broken this game is. I think it's literally just every aspect, isn't it? I've heard people say about uh, graphical glitches, and then just the network doesn't actually work, and they're just all, all sorts of like actual bug- bugs in game as well. Pop ins black screens people turning into cubes guns vanishing audio just not working whatsoever uh, one of the guys at digital foundry their review of call of duty vanguard is a screenshot of them getting a refund that's their <laughs> review which i think is perfect i can't believe that people are going to buy this and i know that they will and I can guarantee you this game will come out and Metro will give it a 4 out of 5. IGN will give it a 8 out of 10 and say it's the most ambitious Call of Duty ever. I, I just, I can't believe people are still buying this shit. Or it, could, it could be uh, the like rare chance that it could be this year's Cyberpunk. I hope so. Reviewers gang up sort of thing. I really, ha- well they don't need to gang up, they just no, need to use like, critical thought. You know, like Cyberpunk, it sort of all went swimmingly and then on release it took like a couple of reviewers to be like, actually hang on a minute, we we were duped here and then everyone yeah, else came this out. this isn't right. Sort of thing. The problem that I see, and it's exactly what Duncan just said, it will still sell. Like, yeah. <laughs> people won't care. It's Call of Duty. It's the most played game every year. We could talk until we're blue in the face about Xbox acquisitions, about what games are coming out that are Xbox exclusive, about PlayStation exclusives. The reality of the situation is most people just buy a games console to play FIFA and Call of Duty. Like, that's the reality of the situation. This game will still sell. There's someone that I work with who's bought a PS5 for no other reason than he wants to play Call of Duty with his friends and they all have PS5s. Like, yeah. that's the reason. He didn't buy it for God of War. He didn't buy it for The Last of Us 2. He didn't buy it for Spider-Man. He didn't buy it for Kena. He bought it for Call of Duty because his mates were getting it. So it will just sell. Yeah, the, the I, I hate using this word, but I'm going to have to... The casual market for Call of Duty is yeah. so big that every year it will sell regardless because those people aren't going to be constantly looking at gaming websites or listening to gaming podcasts and that to even hear about these troubles in the beta. They're literally going to be getting home from work and they'll just play FIFA and Call of Duty sort of thing if they're on Which is their fine, console. there's nothing wrong yeah, with that. but that's what I mean, they won't... So they'll be buying it no matter what sort of thing because that's the game That's the game they want to play. Yeah, and Activision know that so they don't really have yeah. to try because every year it's, it's just guaranteed, guaranteed cash. Like I saw a clip earlier and I think it might have been Jez Corden was playing it and he, he just died for no reason at all. Um, but it, it looks like Modern Warfare. Like I couldn't, I couldn't tell the difference between that and, and Modern Warfare. Like that's what sort of two games ago now. Just it's pathetic. Really, really awful. Well, it's an Activision game, and Activision do lots of things that are awful. Um, which brings us quite poignantly onto our next topic. Um, I know I put a jokey title. Let's talk about sex, baby. Um, we need to talk about what's come out in the last sort of couple of days. Also to that one fucking idiot on Twitter that keeps saying, not all men are rapists. Oh. Yeah, we know that. We're aware that not all men are rapists. But unfortunately, when you work for a company that has something called the Cosby Room, then maybe there's a possibility that assholes and sex offenders and disgusting pieces of shit who will harass women in the workplace will thrive and essentially the SEC 
has subpoenaed Bobby Kotick. Um, he's being indicted for his part in historical sex abuse and harassment that's taken place within Activision Blizzard over really the last decade. Um, anyone who defends that cretinous little fuck weasel, they just need to shut up, sit down and get a life. Like th- There's nothing defensible about Bobby Kotick. He is as close to Scrooge McDuck as humanly possible and he is just a rancid human being and the culture that has spread throughout the companies that he is owner of is a company is, is a culture of laughing about sexual abuse abusing a member of staff so badly she killed herself on a work retreat allowing something called the Cosby suite to even exist within a building so if Call of Duty Vanguard doesn't take Activision down, let's hope the SEC do. Because absolutely fuck Activision Blizzard and Bobby Kotick specifically. I hope they chop his cock off. The the other news that broke today as well was that um, Claire Hunt, she's called, which which was their chief legal officer, has uh, left the company as well. Yes. And des- described her time at the company as full of unexpected twists and turns. What a very, very nice way of saying it was a fucking disaster. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they they now don't have a chief legal officer either. So the chief chief legal officer has just gone, oh, fuck this, and has just upped sticks. Cool. But honestly, yeah, nothing to worry about. And yeah, fuck Activision, basically. Uh, Duncan. Yes? Should we talk about something a little bit nicer? Yeah, go on in. So, as always, Duncan is with us. And you know what that means? It means I get to put on my best radio voice, and I get to say, are you ready? That this week, Duncan Voices Indie Choices is following our fuzzy-headed friend as he's been playing the newly released Flynn, Sons of Crimson. This is a great little title that's just come out on Game Pass. So, Duncan, how have you found this game? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Harry. You, you great mate. Uh, actually, to thank you for this one because you recommended it to me uh, last week. So, uh, cheers, bud. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, oh, every so- week, this just gets so much. <laughs> much more of a caricature every week can you please extend the length of time you say yeah <laughs> yeah, well, so it just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like episode 87 and the, like, the first four minutes of the review will just be eh. <laughs> eh. I'll, do, I'll do my best um oh. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a Flynn, a son of, a son of Crimson. Um, yeah, I, I got to be honest, I, I wasn't interested in this at all um, because I, I tend to really, uh, just, I just these kind of games don't interest me like these retro platformers. Um, but I think Harry, you said you know, give it a go. It looks pretty nice, and I, I'm bloody glad, bloody glad I did. Um, so it's a, a, a really, really lovely looking. Handcrafted to the action platformer developed by Studio Thunder Horse, and I just want to say that is a spectacular name for a studio, Thunder Horse. Yeah. It is, yeah. Um, so you play as uh, a little boy, I think, uh, called Flynn, and you have uh, a dog companion protector um, called Dex, who's a big top doggo. Um, and then right near the beginning of the game, uh, Dex gets ill, uh, which is, you know, no, does he get ill? I think he gets hit or something. Um, so you've got to go off, uh, to find a medicine and then later on in the game, you, yeah, you team up with him again. Um, so I found it really, really reminiscent of old Mega Drive platformers. Um, with like, it has like really, really rich pixel sprites, uh, like Gunstar Heroes and, and Rocket Knight. Probably. Yeah pretty show me age there um but it, it just looks really 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 nice it, i mean it looks like it would belong on a mega driver or snes but it also looks kind of up to date as well um, it's how you imagine in your head the games yes. of that era looked but then when you go back to them and it is literally like a cardboard cutout jumping around on the screen but in your mind, that's what it looked like. Because I, I, I was looking up um, games like it, and I looked up Decap Attack, because uh, I used to love that. I thought it was a little bit like this, and I thought, oh my God, it looks like an horrible. But back then, I thought it looks amazing. Anyway. We actually, um, we spoke sort of about that when me and Sean played. Oh, what was the game? Was it The Messenger? There was a game. Um, it was a platformer that came out on Game Pass, and I wanted to play it for ages, and then we finally got to play it. And essentially, it was everything that you remember from games of that era, mm. but not modernised. 
it was retro to the point of frustration. Uh, it wasn't the messenger. It was um, uh, Cyber Shadow or something, wasn't it? Cyber Shadow, that was the one, yeah. And it was retro looking. And feeling. But, but retro feeling. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that is something that can go wrong with games like, especially like Flynn, where it has that retro aesthetic. Is sometimes they don't sort of bring it forward into the like modern no, day. Not not at all with this. Um, so, so yeah, it, it looks like it could could belong in that era. Um, but it but everything else about it just just feels modern. Um, so you get really lovely looking like sun shafts in forests and little combat flourishes and trees blowing in the winds. Um, the soundtrack's like really lovely as well because I think we spoke last week about the Artful Escape. And and the more and more I talk about these indie games, the more I'm I'm thinking about the soundtrack more because typically I just won't pay much attention to it. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but the soundtrack in games this year is absolutely like, tip top. Um, the, the animation's like really really nice as well so obviously it looks looks retro um, but it feels really current so it's like really lovely little bits of extra animation so uh, if you do like a certain attack you'll get like the nice kind of like like blade swipe animation in it um but again it doesn't feel out of place uh, with with kind of it, it styling um when you first mentioned it, I was like, "Oh shit, it's a Metroidvania," and I just I can't be asked with them. Um, but it's not at all. Uh, they're, they're all they're all linear levels to it. Um, but you do have like an overworld, like Super Mario World or Ukulele, impossible there. Um, and you have uh, a home city that so you can go back and, and upgrade. Um, and you get little diamonds and a really really specific niche thing that reminded me of. There's a game called Kid Chameleon on the Mega Drive um, and I don't think anyone's going to know it but there were diamonds Kid Chameleon yeah and there were, there were diamonds in that <laughs> that are exactly the same just a different colour as the, as the ones in Flynn it's probably just a complete coincidence but it drove me mental think, trying to remember like what, what the game was um, <laughs> the combat is, is great as well so you know my thing with Song of Iron where Everything about it was was lovely, but I just I didn't feel like any impact um, with yeah. the combat. But you really really get it in this, so um, it's it's not super easy, and it's relatively similar. So you have like like the dodge roll mechanic. So they will um, do like a little flash when they're just about to hit you. So you have to roll through, so don't hit them again. But it's just that really simple little thing where the screen slightly shakes on impacts, and it yeah, just just yeah, makes yeah. you feel like you're doing it. Because I really need, I need that that feedback. Um, and you can also unlock different magics for environmental puzzles um, so it, you've got like a snow level and you get ice magic so you need to create ledges out of water turn them into ice so you can jump up um, I haven't haven't completed it yet um, I'm only, only a few hours in uh, but I'd, yeah, I really 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 recommend it it's such a such a lovely little game um, and I re- again it's, I say every week I'm glad it's on Game Pass because I really th- think it's going to get quite a big uh, quite a big following and I hope it does because I know the guy I forget his name but the chap on Twitter the dev was really talking uh, about Case like, Portman yes uh, he's talking about how like, much of a labour of love it was um, and I'm really glad because he's nailed it it's uh, such a great game uh, and uh, I hope lots of people play it if you're in that th- if you, you know, you've got something else you need to play um, give it a go really really love it top game tip so- top this is, this is the great thing that we all keep saying about Game Pass as well is if that game wasn't on Game Pass or Game Pass didn't exist, would you have ever bought that game a- after looking at it and being like, oh, it's a Metroidvania sort of thing? Yeah, not at all. I, I mean, because the, these type of games just don't interest me, like these retro types. Like, I mean, I didn't play Shovel Knight or things like that, probably to my detriment because I know they're really good. I'm just not interested in them. Because it's on Game Pass, you know, really, it's a tiny little game, so it took, I know, five minutes of downloads. Uh, and brilliant. So happy that it's on Game Pass that I got to play it. And I'll, and I'll finish it off. Before we give the uh, yodeling dick butt of approval <laughs> rating, one thing I just want to quickly read out is that Case Portman, he actually put a tweet out, which is the reason that I thought you might enjoy this game, Duncan. Mm. Uh, He tweeted this out on the 15th of September, and he said, I've spent five years creating the game of my dreams, and today is the day that we launch it. Ten-year-old Case scribbling video game ideas in his high school books would have never thought he'd see this day. I hope you enjoy playing Finn as much as I had developing it. 
thank you so much and it's it's really funny because all of the so for like a bit of an older fart like me I'm getting lots of lovely feelings I got back when I was playing a Mega Drive, and he probably <laughs> wasn't even born by the time Mega Drive was out. Um, so it's it's nice that it obviously <laughs> it's like scratching my itch for that kind of nostalgic game, whilst also feeling really current as well. Uh, lovely, lovely job, lovely. Well, there we go. So on the uh, I can't believe I'm going to say this: <laughs> the <it>. yodeling <laughs> dick barometer of approval. Where does this go up to? <laughs> I, can't, I kind of don't want to do it. I feel like, I feel like it will spoil it because I love the game so much. Um, but I'll give it a thumbs up, uh, right, right up, right up the bum bum. Uh, so maybe you just put the put the thumb in there. What is this? What is this rating system now? What's it? <laughs> <laughs> just need that. Need Sean, a, just need shove the entire arm up there. <laughs> do it. <laughs> are we going all the way to the top? Are we? Yes, we fucking oh, are. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, Get it up there, Sean. Sean. Get ready for Come thirty on. seconds of yodeling. <laughs> oh Christ! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know how, but that moved us smoothly on to our next segment. Oh, no, <laughs> no, I don't know how because I don't know how those two things can link. No, they don't. Um, we we are somehow linking butthole fisting to a segment all about dads. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. So Gaz from Game On Daily DM'd us like, your show's really good, I really appreciate it. And if he's listening to this and can hear me talking about dads and fisting, I'm glad you're still listening, Gaz. So, we're going to do the dad off. Now, the reason that I want to do the dad off is for no other reason than I've just recently started listening to Dungeons and & Daddies. And it's like my favourite thing right now. And so... We were think I was thinking of like, oh, what could we put in the script? I want to talk about Dungeons and Daddies, but that would just be too stupid. So I thought, let's find out who is the best dad in gaming. Okay, so me, Sean and Duncan have all picked a dad that we're going to talk about. We're going to have a couple of minutes to, to state our case. And at the end of it, we're going to put a poll up in the live chat about who is the king dad. Or if you're listening to this and it's not live, I want you to comment on our YouTube video. If you're listening to it on YouTube, if you're not, go onto YouTube and then put the comment in there. And I would love to know what your gaming daddies are as well, or who your favorite of the three is. Now, you both know mine, but I don't know either of yours. So I'm going to let you guys go first. I'm going to say, Duncan, you pitch your case first. And then okay. Sean, and then I will go with my daddy. And then okay. we'll put it up for a vote. Okay? So, Duncan, take it away. So, everyone's seen Taken, right? They know the the line, I'll find you and I'll kill you after, yes. after mm-hmm. the guy kidnaps his daughter. But what Liam Neeson doesn't do is go and punch a planet-sized god to save his daughter. <laughs> yeah? So, that's right, guys. I'm talking about Asura. Yeah? You know me? You know the guy? Yes, I yeah. know the guy. So, well, what have I got to fucking say? <laughs> he punches a case. Case. Gone. But, Okay, so Asura's daughter got kidnapped by a god who's the size of a planet, and then Asura got really angry at it and then punched the planet-sized god to save his daughter. So if we're going to do like a little chop jump system, let's, let's have a go. So god punching, 10 out of 10. Arms, 4. <laughs> Penis, probably... His game is actually fun. Yes, it is. Um, oh. So I would like to know, Harry or Sean? Harry, I know yours fucking well doesn't, but Sean, does your dad punch things in order to get the, you know, be a good dad? No. I not think so. I not think so. I'm kind, I'm kind of thinking now that I've gone down the wrong sort of route for these. So uh, I'll, 
I'll start with the like the premise, and then I'll reveal okay. who the dad is. So, okay, when when you're playing video games, you want to just have some time to relax, play the game with no interference or anything, right? Yeah. And the one thing that parents are very good at is constantly like coming in mid game or asking you to pause an online game. Or, or telling you to... I can't, mum, it's online! <laughs> I was going to say, or, or having a go at you for breaking the laptop when it was actually them because they don't know anything about technology. So the perfect dad in a video game is one that doesn't do any of that and just sort of lets you, lets you get on with the game and play it. So my favourite gaming dad is any dad from the mainline Pokemon games. They don't exist, though. Exactly. They can't interfere. So they just they let you get on with they so let you get on with the your game. Your perfect gaming dad <laughs> is a dead one. <laughs> no, he's a gym leader in some of them. Or, okay, um, so your perfect gym gaming dad is one that abandons his child and lets him roam around the world. Lets you get on, on with own. the game. Lets you get oh. on with the game. So okay, uh, well, top, I know top, which one's top, losing, Duncan. Top trumps. <laughs> top trumps. Um, visibility zero. <laughs> Sean, you don't, uh, don't even pitch the case. You've lost. <laughs> Sean, you've lost this. No, I'm not lost until the poll's over. Okay, well... Oh, he's going to win I now, am about to win this. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm going to win. And Sean, I've done this in a five-point bullet point list. So when, if, if you've got, got when your... <laughs> Yeah, if you've got you're editing this, this. Send it over and I'll put it on the uh, video. <laughs> when you're editing this, I want you to like list them like reason one. Okay? So like reason a one. So yeah, like a PowerPoint, I just want the bullet points to show up as I'm saying them, right? Okay. So <laughs> this is why I think Octodad is the best dad. Okay? <laughs> yeah. He just he just is the best dad. And here's my reasoning, right? Reason one. He's an octopus, so he can spray ink in the faces of his children's bullies. Point B. He's an octopus, so he has an arm that is also a penis. Therefore, his wife is always pleasured. <laughs> Exhibit III. He's an octopus, and that allows him to seamlessly blend into any scenario he wants, meaning he can support his children with a human job. Example Quatra. He's an octopus. Meaning he has eight functional limbs, one of them being a penis, so he has the ability to multitask. And case fumpf, he's a fucking octopus. Right? Octodad. Right. He is the champion dad, right? Yeah. So let's do this. Top trumps. You said arms. <laughs> four. Yeah, but he only, uses, he only uses two of them in the fucking game. Yeah, but he's got eight arms. So straight them. away. Watch it, dad. Straight away. Mm, two arms, six <laughs> legs, I'd say. Right. Straight away. <laughs> On limbs, he's a better dad. If we can't oh, limbs, it's changed to limbs now, like, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's changed. Yeah. Fuck off, it's changed to limbs. <laughs> if we're talking like limbs as a basis of how good you are as a dad, <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, done for. Bad dad. Octo dad, brilliant dad. Right? Let's right. talk about the next one, Sean. You said visibility. <laughs> Octo dad <laughs> hides the fact he's an octopus. So you're like visibility is zero. My visibility yeah, yeah. is minus eight because he, he hides all eight of his limbs. That's not a good perfect. thing. You've got to he, get the that, highest number. And he does that to his own family. He's lying to his family that he's actually a fucking octopus. But that's how good of a dad he is. Sure he's not upset he's his kids. He's killed the real dad. No, he killed, shut up. He killed the Pokemon that's a bad dad. Dad. Yeah. So let's mm, go for another top trumps, right? Squid ink, right? So inkness. Okay. Squink. How much ink can your dad's spray? Tell me right now. Tell me right now, Sean. How much ink can your dad spray? Well, mine's non-existent, so none. There we go. So on ink, well, limbs, and visibility, <laughs> I win. Yeah, but and they're, they're the main three things. Look, my I'm a dad. Da <laughs> my I'm dad. a dad. Yeah. I am a dad, so I know. I know what matters. Are you? Are you an octopus? I'm slick like an octopus. <laughs> Harry, when you're little kids. Are getting bullied. What? I'm going to come what? in that kid's face. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, so he's a nonce. I can't believe I said that. You're a nonce. I can't believe I just said that. Oh my god. Have we <laughs> found that line now? Daddy, I'm being bullied at school. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we very swiftly move oh, on? I, I can't be photoshopping any of this. Probably for the best. No, don't worry. 
so I, I genuinely think Octodad is the peak dad. <laughs> what? <laughs> he is. He's got more arms than any of your dads, right? He's got the biggest penis because one of his limbs is a penis. He can blend in and have an office job, right? He can he can literally spin seven plates at the same time while jumping on a skipping rope and lying to his family. And he's an at the octopus. Same time. Octo dad wins. I was so say, honorable mention Hades from Hades. No, he's the worst dad. Is he? Or is his son? Is his son just a brat? <laughs> No, he's Lord of the Underworld. Yeah, but he's trying to give his kids What's... a good work ethic. Yeah, Not I was going to say... fuck up a supermarket. Lord of the Underworld, he's been given that job. He didn't choose it. Yeah, it's like Joseph Fritzl tried to give his kids really good um, really good hide-and-seek skills, didn't he? At least he insulated the place. He's not a monster. Octo Dad doing that. Putting up some cellar sex. Fucking hell. So... I don't know how oh. we. I don't know how we can move on from this, but this has got really basically, bad. Sean, <laughs> I want you to put the poll up now, yep. and we will let the people decide, and then leave a comment on which of the three you think is the best dad. I know that Sean's going to win this. Everyone's just going to vote for Sean just to piss me off. It's Pokemon. <laughs> it's so annoying. So, should we just move on? Should we just move on to Game Pass or play? Yeah. <laughs> I have no way, I have literally no way of segueing okay. no. from coming in a child's face to talking about... Can you segue, please? Can you, well, can you tell people what we've been playing? Come or Ink, it's all a matter of perspective. And we've been playing the perspective puzzle game Super Liminal. <laughs> Oh, there we, we go. There's indeed. your segue. Oh, so I did put I, a little caveat asking: Did it shift Harry's perception that puzzle games are fucking boring? I read that, right? and instantly I did not look forward to this segment. No, so I quite like Super Liminal. Oh, okay, I think it's quite the the puzzling mechanics are quite good. Duncan, are you aware of what Super Liminal is? Uh, no. So, you so it's a puzzle game where you can interact with objects and by bringing them closer to you and shifting the perspective, it makes that object bigger. So say you need to jump up onto a ledge and there's a very small brick on the floor. You pick the brick up, bring it closer to yourself, drop it on the floor, and then it's got bigger so you can then jump onto the ledge, right? That's Mm. the basic premise of the game. So you can interact with objects to change their perspective in order to solve these puzzles. It's quite enjoyable, I liked solving the puzzles. However, my gripe with it is that once you've done sort of two or three levels, it is literally just the same thing, like much of the same. And after a couple of hours of playing it, I just sort of felt like I got... There were were no surprises coming my way. It was just, oh, more of the same. Oh, more of exactly the same. And it it just didn't really inspire me to keep on playing it it was fun enough and I'd say pick it up for half an hour just to sort of like get your brain working a little bit but it just didn't really tick too many boxes for me I enjoyed it to a point but I like the Stanley Parable have you played that Duncan? Uh, no uh, I really liked the look of it though um, I know that I know real, of it it's that procedural game it's got that yeah. real dry wit about it it's got the um, the narrator, who's obviously part of the game as well, mm-hmm. who sort of converses with you. And I feel like Superliminal tried a little bit to be Stanley Parable-ish with how the, the narrator goes. They sort of It was a mixture of like Portal and Portal 2 narration with a bit of, um, with a little bit of Stanley Parable, but it didn't really hit much of a marker. And I just sort of felt that the world the, the, world the game was set in was just a little bit boring. Like my favourite thing about Portal was how great the actual environments that you were in felt. And I just never really felt that like amped about like going back into Super Liminal because it was all just a bit drab. But I mean, it was okay. I wouldn't say it's like a masterpiece, but it's an interesting take on a puzzler. And it's it's very different to anything I've ever played before. It just didn't really do much for me what about you Sean 
Um, yeah, I, th- I think pretty much the same as you. Like it's um, it is a short game, so it doesn't. It's I think it was about two two and a half hours it took me to get through it. But um, yeah, it's it's very good mechanic for the puzzle, very unique. But it's a shame they don't expand or experiment with it at all it is pretty much it doesn't they, change at all yeah they, they've got their core mechanic and they very much stick to it throughout the whole game so there's, there's never any like little wild cards to mix it up a bit or some like a, a spanner thrown in the works that makes you look at a solution a different way sort of thing it is the same sort of thing but like i said the it's, closest it's, that it came to changing was when you had to look at objects in a certain way in order for them to appear Mm-hmm. Like that was really the only shift change that the game ever made. Um, yeah, yeah, so it just yeah. But like I said, it's it's very short, so it's not. I didn't I didn't feel like it was dragging that mechanic sort of thing. But once once I got through it, I was like, it's a shame they didn't sort of expand on it a bit. If if they made like a sequel and they did each level has like a different sort of aspect to that mechanic, then I'd be more than up for playing that. But yeah, it was just. Just a bit, just a bit of a sort of mare feeling at the end, but it was it's yeah. still worth a playthrough if you like puzzle games. Oh yeah, I mean, I would I would give this a hundred percent game play hmm. for no other reason that it is a puzzle game that I actually enjoyed better than um, Mist. Oh, <laughs> much better than Mist. It's definitely a game play for me. M- yeah, my main my main sort of gripes and issues with it are just that it's a little bit boring. Like I, I didn't ever feel like when I went to a new level I didn't ever feel like wow this is interesting it's like oh now I'm in a hotel okay I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as I was doing last time but this time I'm doing it in a hotel like it just didn't really like catch my attention too much it it just didn't I never felt overly enthusiastic about it but I would still say give it a play because like Sean's just said, it's a short enough game where you could probably do it in one sitting. It isn't like anything else that I've played before. I just feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Yeah, pretty much. It feels I'm, I'm, This is going to be the game I most likely bring up pretty much every time we do a puzzle game, but it's like if The Witness only had the starting area sort of thing for its game. So it yeah. is. it introduces you to mechanic, but then it doesn't expand or explore different elements to that mechanic it just sticks to its like roots and core for the majority Definitely. of the game one of one of my main frustrations as well is that it was very arbitrary what objects you could interact with so there are objects all over the individual levels in some instances but you just can't grab or touch any of them there's mm. only that there is literally one way in which you can solve a puzzle and Sort of like my issue with 12 minutes. I know it's a very, very different type of game. But looking back at 12 minutes, and I've actually since replayed it and had the same issue, is that for a puzzle game, I feel like when there's only one way to do something, it pigeonholes your experience. So with this game, I feel like there was there were so many ways that the puzzle solving basically became grab this object, make it big or small, put it down, jump on it. I never felt like it moved on from that. And exactly the same with 12 minutes, where it was just do these specific things in this exact arbitrary order. I feel like there was real scope for Superliminal to really shake things up by giving people multiple different ways in which to solve the single puzzles. Now, I know it's a small team that have made this and it it's probably more than anything a test for the future for them to then like move forward with it but man do i feel like this missed missed the mark and it could have been so much better if they had just gone further with this mechanic but uh frustrating but mm. fun at times yeah pretty much i, w- I would have obviously we don't know how development was or the, the- like situation the creators in anyway but i feel like it would have benefited from maybe two more hours of runtime and then sprinkling in like i said the different like expansions upon the core mechanic sort of thing but yeah 
it was it was still fun. It's a good good core mechanic the, to build off of in the future. Yeah, the core mechanic itself is really interesting. That shifting of perspective is great, but I just don't think they did enough with it. Once mm. once you've done that first level, you've played the entire game. Uh, there is pretty, nothing. Pretty much, yeah. There's nothing that really changes from that point, and it is just just a bit annoying. And a few of my gripes are that because not every object is interactive, often you will miss out on how to solve a puzzle because the object that you're supposed to grab, you haven't been able to grab for like the last four different puzzles. And now all of a sudden, that's the one that you need to go for. Um, There was a, a level with an exit sign and throughout the entire game, you've never been able to interact with an exit sign and it puts you in this room and the only thing that's interactable is the exit sign that hasn't been for the rest of the game. And there's just a few little frustrating moments where it doesn't, it's not immediately obvious what to do, but it also goes against what the previous levels have taught you. For me, a good mm-hmm. puzzle is that you build on the experience that you've had before in order to solve the puzzles in the future, not let's just arbitrarily flip the rules for one room and let's see how they do. But I would still give it a gameplay. Oh yeah, 100%. It is worth a single playthrough sort of thing. Yeah, definitely. Now, we are going to be playing a game I've already picked because I'm quite excited oh, about okay, it. Thanks, then. <laughs> oh, did you want to pick one? <laughs> so, there is Sable coming out this week. Well, that was the game I was going to say. Oh, well, that wasn't the one I was going to play. I was going to play oh. the FIFA 22 Early Access Trial on EA Play. Get fucked. <laughs> You're not playing... Fi- I'll tell you what, Sean. You play FIFA 22. I'll play that and Sable, because I do genuinely want to play Sable. It looks Come stunning. Come back, and what I'll do is I'll find last year's review of IGN, and I'll just read that out verbatim, <laughs> all right? Yep, and then we can do a clickbait uh, title for YouTube, because it's, cause it's FIFA... With my mouth open. Picture of you doing the Macaulay Culkin scream, like, you won't believe what this guy said about FIFA. Gone wrong. You, you won't believe Mbappe's rating that's dropped in the <laughs> pre-early access uh, beta trial. So I'm going to play Sable, and you play FIFA whatever we're up to. And Sable. And Sable. Just to preempt Sable, I, I gave the, um, the demo a go over the summer, and it looks really good. Ooh. Really interesting uh, style. So, looking forward to hearing you talk about that. Yeah. Well, I I'm very amped for it. It's one I've had my eye on, and yeah. Once we've played Sable, the week after that, I think we've got to give Lemnisgate a go. And I think it's a very, very good time for Game Pass at the moment. So, lots of games to talk about, and we have a few more games to talk about, don't we? Oh, actually. If oh, you want to do Lemniscate, there is a game coming out on the 30th that I really want to try. Okay. Astria Ascending. Oh, yeah, yeah. You play Astria Ascending, I'll play Lemniscate. Sweet. Oh, that's another gaming-heavy podcast coming up in a few weeks, guys. Mm. No more stupid having to think of last-minute segments to make up because we haven't played enough games. <laughs> well, we can still do Best Game in Mums. Nah, <laughs> nah, we won't. Don't worry. <laughs> Not after the, <laughs> the monstrosity that I've just caused. No, I think I think we need to leave that in the bin now. <laughs> so, so we're gonna we're gonna move on to something else that should have been left in the bin really months ago, and it's game in sixty seconds. Sean, what the fuck it's is game in sixty seconds? It's our highest viewed segment. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I know it is, Sean. What is game in sixty seconds? Game in sixty seconds is where we have sixty seconds to describe a game title or in my case show an image that describes a game title but it doesn't take six seconds because they're very shit usually takes about three to five seconds and then paul and zo guess them within about 10 seconds and we like the name game in six seconds because we like nicholas cage and the film gone in 60 seconds pretty much yep that's how it goes interesting fact about nicholas cage he once bought a tyrannosaurus rex skull and he said he's never going to retire from acting yep so we're never going to retire a game in 60 seconds in his honour. <laughs> um, we're talking about how shit how shit they were, right? Last week, Duncan's clue was two words. <laughs> I think... Also, are actually the best one there's ever been. It was and amazing. 
Zoe got it, so I think a round of applause for Zoe on that one. Good job, Zoe. Really, he really... says through gritted teeth. <laughs> Great. Great fucking job, Zoe. So. Really job. proud of you. So, really happy when you got the answer to that one. <laughs> Zoe. Sounds a bit disingenuous <laughs> there, Dunks. <laughs> I was very What's... impressed, though, with how she deduced it. So, what was your clue last week, Duncan? It was a cooey a diagram <laughs> in that in that voice. <laughs> and what game was that? So I was having a, a, a liquid drink. Um, uh, the game Harry was Haven. <laughs> Would you like me to explain bad. explain it? No. No. no, I don't want you to explain <laughs> it. No, nope, we'll just leave it on that. Oh, nope. Uh, Sean, what? Put the pi- <laughs> okay. put the picture up of your one from last week. There he is. And what was that one? That is Frostpunk. And why is that Frostpunk? Because it's CM Punk and his hair is now Frosted Tips. <laughs> ah. Brilliant. And you actually got it. You got a wrestling one. I know. And I'm really annoyed because I had to bleep the fuck out of that one last week. <laughs> uh, my That's one right. you're, was. You're both like this week's one from me. My one was not very good. I thought it was, but everyone else thought it was terrible. Mine was <laughs> Dodgers on the Run. And that was the Artful Escape. Because the Artful Dodger was on the run because he was escaping. And I thought everyone would get that because we had just literally talked about the Artful Escape like 10 minutes before. I think that's why we didn't get it because normally we pick games that have been on the service for quite a while sort of thing. I think that's the first time we've picked a game in the same episode that we talk about the game. But Sean, what you're forgetting is that I never ever come up with these games in 60 seconds in time. (laughs) And I had to think, fuck, I need a game. And that's actually reminded me that I don't have one this week yet. So fucking hell. I've got so two if you then. can just if very quickly say get, Connor's clue. I guess clue. yours is going to be super liminal this no, week. No, 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 not at all. If Oh, shit, I've got to think of a different one. If you haven't got um, one, Harry, can, I've got two. No, it's all right, I'll come up with one. Don't worry, mate, don't worry. I've already got one, don't worry, mate. If you can just tell the people what Connor's clue was, because i completely forgotten what it was. Okay, so Connor's was, the people in that their manner are pretty malevolent. I and nearly that, got it. And that game, you are very naughty and malevolent. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And that game was <laughs> Resident Evil. They're very naughty. Very that naughty. Clue, was it? They oh, are very naughty. Oh, you're very naughty. <laughs> Bit of bad boy. <laughs> the picture in that in the game itself. <laughs> very naughty. You naughty no. zombie. Naughty. Don't bite. No. Or I'll come on your face. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that, Dunks. I just spat juice out of my nose. Um, I've just come up with a clue, and it's really, really bad. So you you guys just tell yours quickly, because I need to work out exactly how to phrase this for it to make sense. Right. (laughs) Okay. Sean, you show yours first. Okay, get get your discords up. Okay, I've got it. I've got it. Okay, two seconds, just loading up. Oh, laptops be mighty slow. Don't do this. Oh, okay, no. it'll be suspense. it'll be with everyone right about now. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I think I know one of these. Hang on, I must do. Hang on. Are you fucking kidding me? That was the one that I just thought of. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Really annoyingly, <laughs> he hates it. Now, my my clue for this was so bad, right? My my clue that I was about to say for this was those very small sugary sweets are backwards changing into third. <laughs> what? Because it's a, it's. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so I have to think of another one now. What? I've got one. I've got a new one. Don't worry, I've got one. That's a good one, Sean. I like that. Duncan, do you want to say yours quickly while I very, well, I, very I, quickly find a new clue? I've, I've done two because I, I, I'm pretty sure you've really done one of them before. 
Uh, so the first one is wet pilfering cunts. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> What in the hell is that, Duncan? <laughs> what game is that, Dunks? It's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh my brilliant. god! But I wasn't sure if you'd really done that one before. I'm sure you no, haven't. we haven't. Don't, That's so no, I don't good. Think we have. not. Okay. That is so good. Oh, I've, oh my I've god, got, Duncan! I love that so I much. I think I've got I've got a potential uh, Zoe and Paul um, beta. Oh, I can, I'm I can sweating. Save that for another time. You, you have just broken me, Duncan. That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. Um, I, I've I've got my one, and. It's ridiculous. Okay, so... who? I think... Uh, <laughs> ooh, I think that you need to feather that joint in your leg as well. Oh, I, think. I think you need to feather that joint in your knee as well. And that is... Wow! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh. Good luck, Paul and Zoe. There oh, is that. no chance this week. Oh. Surely not. Fucking <laughs> oh, oh. hell! Oh my god! I'm dying. <laughs> crying that was so stupid so so you need to feather off the joint in your knee as well oh I can't breathe (laughs) Sean can you can you do the outro please oh fucking hell I cry my eyes Oh, oh, mate, give me a sec. Oh, my God. Tell you what, let's just do a quick a quick cut, all right? Okay, we've composed ourselves. We're back. Hello. Oh. Wow. Should we do the outro for the show, Sean? Yeah. <laughs> Are you gone again? <laughs> no, nearly. Come on. No, get it no, together, mate. Get it, get it together. We're a professional outfit. Come on. Slap myself a few times. Oh. Okay. Wow. So, <laughs> oh. come on, Sean, come on! Oh. Thank you for listening to the Gamers Watch podcast. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Be sure to share this with some friends. <laughs> oh, for, for our YouTube viewers who are still around, uh, if you stick around after this episode is finished, uh, we are going to tag on to the end of it a bonus review that Duncan has done of I Am Fish. Leave us a one-star review if you're a little bitch. If you're not a little bitch, please do like and subscribe and share this and comment on the video. And if you're platform of choice allows you leave us a review and as always keep on listening and keep on gaming oh man that last couple of minutes then (sighs) fuck my life that was funny
Hi there guys, and thanks for sticking around after this episode has just aired. You're about to be tuning into a bonus episode of Duncan Voices Indie Choices, a little extra review for the fantastic little indie game I am Fish. So Duncan, how did you find it? Great bonus round, how are you great mate? Uh, yeah, so I am Fish, recently came to Game Pass. It's made by Bossa Studios, who, if you don't know, make really, really fucking irritating games like I Am Bread. So you see what they've done there with their naming conventions. Um, <clears throat> a really cool fact about this is that it's set in bloody Saltash. And I don't suppose anyone who listens to it who doesn't live in southwest Devon and Cornwall um, that is literally on my doorstep pretty much um, and also Harry you know it from yes, having worked I know it. a bit um, so you, as you there, there, there's a big bridge in between uh, Plymouth and Plymouth and Saltash called the Tamar and that is in the game so I treated the dev and like oi mate is this is this a Tamar bridge and he's like yes it is I always live there so there you go fun useless fact um so the whole point of the game is that you are four fish trying to find each other again after you get split up from a little pet shop. Um, if you've ever played uh, a Bossa Studios game before, um, the, it has their typically wonky controls, uh, which is to say it's annoying as shit. And I say it isn't fun, but it's very annoying. Um, so it look it looks really really nice, um, but it but it's a puzzle adventure game i guess so the game starts off where you're in a fish bowl and you have to roll around to find your way back into the ocean um but it's not like not like marble madness oh god i'm so old um or super monkey ball where if you start rolling a certain way you will automatically go there the physics of it is that your fish in the bowl is pushing the bowl a certain way. So it needs to kind of build up enough momentum to move that way. Um, it's, it's quite tricky, um, because there's lots of little ledges and things that you need to, you need to navigate through. Um, but it looks really lovely. It's quite fun. But again, you, you should know what you're getting into playing a, playing a boss of studios game. Uh, but some game pass. So what have you got to lose, man? Play it. Give it a go. Do it.